Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. Today I'm not going to talk about Python despite the name Python for Microscopist, but I'm going to talk about an emerging topic called Docker. Well, it's not, I mean, it's still emerging in most communities, but it's been around for a while. Now, uh, why should you care about Docker? Well, you should care about it if you ever want your code to be used by others or if you ever want to deploy your code so it runs on someone else's machine or uh, even in the cloud. Now, uh, your code actually works on your computer. I hope it works on your system because as the errors show up when you're trying to execute your code, you fixed it. If it says, okay, uh, scikit image not available, you probably pip install scikit image and made it work. Now, what about on others' uh, computers, on other systems? So when you actually uh, share your code with others or yourself, you know, you move it from your workstation to a different workstation. First of all, uh, depending on the language that you're using, of course, we are talking about Python, but in some cases you even want to, uh, or e you even need to worry about whether the operating system is Windows or does it only work on Mac or, uh, you know, or Linux. And how many times have we actually wished that, okay, I love this program, only I wish it worked on my operating system, whether it is Windows or Linux or Mac or whatever it is. So uh, Docker actually helps address that core issue of making things work on other systems, uh, including uh, different operating systems, uh, servers, you know, even in the cloud. Now, uh, how does it do that? Well, uh, I have a quick graphic that I would like to, I mean, I have a graphic that I'd like to use for a quick explanation of how it actually works, but I hope the reason why we need Docker is clear enough, right? You write a bunch of code, it works on your computer, you publish a paper, you want others to be able to use it, so uh, uh, how can others easily use it? Or you have this code and you're graduating, you're moving on, someone else is taking up your research, how do they, how can they uh, may, uh, run this code on their system, okay? Uh, first of all, if it is Python, it's easy. Okay, make sure you're using Python 2 or Python 3, whatever that version is. And then look at all the, uh, all the uh, dependent libraries. If, it is, if you are using TensorFlow, uh, if you're using, uh, for example, uh, scikit-learn, scikit-image, NumPy, Pandas, make sure all of those are installed, okay? And then chances are it actually works even on a Linux or a Mac system as long as you have this. But again, uh, what if you just want to deploy that as an application? So Docker, exactly, like I mentioned earlier, it is designed to address this core issue so your code or your application is portable. Okay, when I say portable, it's literally on your system, other system, Windows, Linux, Macs, and also in the cloud. Okay, so uh, now let me actually use a uh, graphic like I promised. And if you look down here, uh, this is a typical uh, traditional computer. Let's say this is your Windows system. So at the bottom of it, you have the hardware, right? I mean, you have your uh, motherboard, RAMs, and uh, hard drives, and uh, of course, CPU, and uh, GPU, or a graphics card. So you have your hardware. On top of that, you have an operating system. Of course, it can be Linux, it can be Windows, Mac, uh, three major operating systems. So sticking with, for example, Windows, which is what I'm working on, uh, so I have uh, other systems, uh, other stuff running on my system, right? There, are, um, I almost said a million others, probably a million other processes running on my system. But uh, uh, when it comes to programs, I know I'm recording this using Camtasia, so that's running on the system. I'm using PowerPoint for this couple of slides, so that's one other thing. And I have a whole bunch of other things, my mail application, the whole, whole bunch of stuff that's actually happening on the system. And by the way, some of these can interfere with some other libraries. But usually Python is safe from that, uh, uh, unless you have multiple versions of Python installed and then things get confusing. Now, uh, and uh, let's say you're uh, coding in Python, so you have your application code and then you have your required software libraries that uh, enable the execution of Python. So all, all of this is, uh, let's say, a typical uh, operating system. So now when you actually move this on a typical, I should say, environment for your application. So if you want to move your application to a different, uh, to a different computer, then you have to move pretty much this entire, like including this operating system libraries and your code and 
that operating system should be able to recognize this hardware and all of that stuff, okay? It's possible. This is what they did with virtual machines, and this is possible, but the problem with virtual machines is it can get a bit bulky because the entire operating system will have to be booted up, not just a tiny bit. So Docker, in a way, addressed that little point that I just mentioned right now. Hey, entire operating system is taking up too much, uh, too much uh, resources, so how can we decouple that? And that's exactly what Docker actually, so you still have your hardware, of course, and then uh, the operating system uh, on top of this hardware. Now see how this Docker container is kind of decoupled from uh, uh, this operating system. Inside this Docker container, you have a, an image of this base operating system, which is a very lightweight version, okay? And that's inside this container. And also inside the Docker container is your application code and the dependent libraries. Now this is a container, so think of this literally as a container that contains everything, right? I mean, that's what the name suggests over there. So now the container can be actually moved to a different operating system because the core op main operating system is outside here. So now I can, as long as I have some sort of a Docker desktop, let's say installed on Windows or Mac or Linux or even in the cloud, then I can take this container and execute it. I can give this container to anyone and they can just run it. And they don't have to think about, do I need Linux? Do I need MATLAB? Do I need this or that? By the way, I said application, uh, application code here. This application code can be Python, uh, MATLAB, C++, Java, you name it, you know, pretty much everything is Dockerizable nowadays, including image scripting. If you have a whole bunch of image scripts that you would like to kind of uh, uh, containerize, you can also do that. And why would you do that? Well, let's say my container one is uh, uh, image script that actually does something, but then some part of that is missing then you can create another Docker container that actually handles this missing part. For example, you wanna run a bunch of statistics on the results that you're getting out of ImageJ. So you can create another container and you can define an interface between these two and join them so the data gets automatically transferred and this is how you can kind of put together a bunch of uh, Dockers and create your own uh, workflow. So this is, uh, uh, this is a new way of working rather than actually doing one thing at a time. Uh, so uh, anyway, in summary, Docker is a game changer when it comes to how your application is portable on uh, multiple systems and also you know, portable where you can, uh, you can execute your code in the cloud. Now, uh, finally, okay, where, where do you get it? You can actually go to docker.com slash product slash Docker desktop, go ahead and download. The Docker desktop, once you go ahead and install it, again, on my Windows system, if I look at the system tray, uh, you see this tiny Docker icon, which is nothing but a, uh, what looks like a whale, uh, you know, or half a whale, uh, carrying a whole bunch of little boxes or containers, and so that kind of summarizes the essence of Docker anyway. Uh, just so I show you how it looks like on the web page, so here it is, docker.com, it's the same link I just uh, uh, showed you. And uh, there you go, you can download Docker Desktop for Mac and Windows. I believe uh, Docker comes as a native uh, application in uh, Linux, but if it's not there, you can go ahead and Google search for Docker uh, on Linux and you can go ahead and install it. So now, once you install it, what do you do? How do you take your code and containerize it so it actually works anywhere? That's actually, a almost, uh, it's a very easy process actually. I'll record that in a different video because I really would like to explain what uh, a Docker image is and Docker container is and how can you create an image and how can you uh, containerize it and eventually how do you run this application, okay? It shouldn't take longer than, I would say, 10 minutes or so. Uh, so let's meet again in the next tutorial and I hope you really uh, learned something from this tutorial. And again, as usual, I request you to please go ahead and subscribe to this channel which keeps me encouraged to create more such content. So thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.